The Independent National Electoral Commission has declared the Adamawa State governorship election inconclusive. This was due to a margin of votes. The candidate of the All Progressives Congress in the state, Senator Aisha Tu Dahiru, scored 390,275 votes, while the incumbent, Governor Amadou Fintiri, the People's Democratic Party candidate, polled 421,524 votes. And Victor Giwa is the national coordinator and advocates for people's rights and justice. And he is also an INEC accredited election observer. He joins us now to share his own perspective on the situation in Adamawa State. Good afternoon and welcome to Arise News. Thank you for joining us this afternoon for this discussion. Yeah, good afternoon, and thank you for having me. Under what uh, circumstances can uh, INEC declare an election inconclusive? What are the specific uh, points, just so that we're all on the same page? OK, thank you very much. Uh, firstly, for an election to be declared or to be said to be inconclusive, it is when one of these conditions are prevailing. One, the, when the difference between the two, con two contending highest number, uh, candidates with the highest number of votes, the difference in their marginal lead is less than the total number of PVC that is not collected, that is one. So what it means is that if party A and B are running head to head, or the, the, the lead between party A and B is such that conduct of election in one or two polling units can establish the difference then that election will be said to be inconclusive, especially where there are areas, polling units, where election was not held. Or they have polling units where elections were postponed. Or polling units where election we have voided. That is the provision of the law in respect to inconclusiveness in an election. Well, but some people are wondering why it's just in a Madama state and in Kebe state that the uh, results of the election were declared inconclusive. Some people believe that Ogun state, you know, whose results seemed a bit controversial to some analysts, should also be declared inconclusive. So how then do you measure, um, is, is it that INEC has different sets of rules for different states? How do you align, you know, everything that happened during this election? Yeah, thank you very much. And that seemed to be a very good, that's, that is a very good question. And for us in the civil society organization, that has been one of the, you know, talking points. We have been interrogating the sincerity of, of INEC officials in the conduct of this, of this election. From the video clip we have seen from the speeches and press releases, statements made by various uh, candidates and political parties, one of the issues you can draw out from their statements is the fact that the desperation of politicians, vulnerability of INEC officials, and compromised security agencies are the major problem with this election. The 2023 election has been, uh, will I say it now, it has been bungled by the act of desperate politicians, vulnerable INEC officials, and compromised security agency. Then I will take it so that in answering your question, you will notice that in conduct of election, three 
um, instruments are very important. You need to look at the Electoral Act 2022, the INEC regulation and guideline for the 2023 election, and the manual. So key in the conduct of the election by officials is the INEC rules and regulation. There are so many things that are contained in INEC rules and regulations, but are not found in the Electoral Act. For example, you will never see the word e-portal or i-rev, the, I, the I, in INEC uh, result viewing portal. You will never see that word in the Electoral Act. You will never see the word beavers in the Electoral Act. You will only see the word beavers. You will only see the IREV in the INEC guidelines and regulation. So what it means is that electoral officers, coalition officers, presiding officers of INEC that are saddled with the responsibility of, conduct, of declaration of result should acquaint themselves with the rules. So in some cases, for example, in Adamawa State, what we saw yesterday, where the coalition officer haven't collated the results of the candidates, and he, an, he announced, he declared the results of, the, of each of the candidates, that is, especially the, con, the two contending candidates with the highest number of votes. What was, what was expected of him yesterday was just to have declared the results as it is. It is just to have declared the results as it is because in those other local governments that he made reference to, the election in those areas, according to him and according to the uh, uh, coalition officers in those local governments, the elections were cancelled as a result of over voting. So when elections are cancelled because of, as a result of over voting under the rules, you don't go back there and conduct an election. So the rule does not provide for to, to reschedule an election where election results have been cancelled on the basis of over voting. Now, where you can have a rescheduled election is where during the course of an election, election was interrupted as a result of violence or threat to violence or failure of the beavers to work. So in those conditions and in those polling units, elections can be rescheduled and to be conducted in a day, either 24 hours, depending on the circumstance. So you cannot conduct an election where elections have been conducted, results known, but cancelled as a result of overvoting. Now, so it means that there are certain INEC officials who, out of manifest compromise, seriously out of manifest compromise, or out of dictates from the headquarters or from some other places, they have refused, they have reneged, they have neglected to follow simple guidelines, guidelines that they themselves have designed for the simple, peaceful conduct of an election. So that is why when you see what happened in Adamawa, what happened in Kebi, and just oppose it with what happened in Ogun State, you will see conflict in the, in the, in the, in the pattern of the result, in the, in the attitude of the coalition officers. Laws are supposed to be certain. Laws are supposed to be are supposed to be are supposed to be predictable. It is not discretional. The rules are very clear. But a lot of these coalition officers, out of manifest compromise, out of mischief, they have decided to take certain positions that have undermined the will of the people. Uh, uh, Mr. Giwa, let me just uh, restate what you said, just to make sure that uh, we're clear. In cases where there's overvoting, there can be no rerun election. Is that what you're, you said? Correct. Where there is overvoting, it means the product of overvoting is a cancelled election. It's a cancelled result. So elections 
cannot be conducted in that particular area. That is what I'm saying. All right. Well, we have many, many more questions to ask you. This is quite a topic that will be uh, picked apart in the next couple of days. Thank you so much, uh, Victor Giwa, for joining us this afternoon and for this important discussion.